Hi, everybody. I'm Lori Ditto. Welcome to Make Today Count. You know, eternity is coming and getting ready, making today count for that day is really important. And on today's episode, I'm going to talk about the Lord coming to correct me. It's not something you ever want to have happen. And so if you don't mind learning through somebody else's experience, that's the reason why I want to share this. So before I do, let's look in the scriptures at Matthew 10, 7 through 8. This is what it says. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received. Now, freely give. I believe the scripture and I remember the first time I read it, I was like, I, we need to do this. Everyone needs to do this. The instructions, the commandment is very simple. And so when you look at how God is saying, first, you got to be willing to go. That's important. If, um, if you're not willing to go, then you're not willing to obey anything. And as an evangelist, I, w- I will talk to anyone. And I'll tell you what, God has, he has helped me that when I see someone that I think I don't like, I know that's just the person I'm supposed to talk to because Jesus loves the lost and he shared that love with me. I call it a wound in my heart that if I know that you don't know Jesus yet, I hurt for you. My, my, my spirit loves your soul. And so go preach. Preach is different than sharing because when I share something, you know, I have an opinion. Maybe you have an opinion too. I want to hear, I want you to hear my opinion. Maybe I'll listen to your opinion too, but preaching, preaching, that's about the truth exclamation mark. And I'm going to share that and keep sharing that. And no matter what, keep coming back to it. Because when we preach about the truth, your opinion does not matter. That was a revelation to me. Preach. And I train my evangelists. It's one thing to be one-on-one, but when you are in a crowd, you preach the gospel. And, And I'm not ashamed of that gospel. And neither should you be. It says for us to heal the sick. Now, I've had the opportunity for God to use my hands and heal the sick. How? I was in I was in Mexico and a little boy never had gotten out of a wheelchair. But because of the preaching of the truth of the word of God, that little one believed it. He grabbed a hold of it. And then that child got out of the wheelchair and began to walk. He's never walked before. So of course his walking doesn't look all that great. Everyone was yelling, hey, Seuss, hey, Seuss, hey, Seuss. Of course. Who healed that child? Our great king. We've seen the deaf. Their ears have been opened. The blind. When I was in China, A blind man got his sight back. And then again, when I was in uh, Colorado, I don't tell you this because I want you to say, hey, look at what Lori can do. I want you to know that this scripture is for you. You need to do this. Backs have been healed and and you just name it. Jesus can do it all. And I have been healed by the Lord. So this commandment that God has given us is for you, too. Then it says, you know, cleanse the lepers. Let me push pause on that one. Raise the dead. So what's it like to raise the dead? Well, I don't know because I haven't done it yet. That doesn't mean I haven't tried. Six times I've tried to raise the dead. And what is it about raising the dead? So I believe that when you raise the dead, Jesus will receive all honor, all glory, all praise. And so first, it's got to be a dead person. And so, you know, I'm not around that many dead people. But when it happens, 
I believe that God is going to do it and it's going to become more and more common. The more that we as believers believe in this commandment of the Lord, the more this is going to happen. It says cast out demons. Well, you're only going to know how to cast out demons if you go get trained. Figure out deliverance. What might a demon do? Figure it out so that you're not surprised by it. And just do the stuff. Because doing the stuff is remarkable with God. And how do you do it? You do it for free. And I'm going to say that again. How do you do it? You do it for free. If somebody wants to pay me for the gifts of God, I, I want to hide because he's not for sale. Freely, you've been given. So now help others freely. Now let's back up to the cleanse the lepers. That's what I want to talk about is cleansing the lepers. You see, God told me, Lori, I want you to go to India. I was like, okay, God, I mean, at first it sounded like a great adventure. I feel like going to India. But the doors had never opened for me to go to India. And then all of a sudden the door opened to go to India. I was like, God, I'm going to get to go to India. What might you want for me to do there? And he said, I want you to go and hug the lepers. I was like, I'm going to get to go. I'm going to get to go. I'm going to hug the lepers. I mean, that's how I was. I was so excited. And so I had a I had an intercessory team and they had my um, itinerary and they knew what was going to happen. I'm going to go to India. I'm going to hug the lepers. And I just knew, God knows, I'm, I'm working on this list. And maybe I need to do it in order is what I was thinking. Maybe what I need to do is I need to get the, get the, um, heal the, cleanse the lepers down before I could raise the dead. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe I need to do it in exact order, which is okay, what, however God wants to do it. So I'm in India now. And I'm in India with... A, a, a bad cut on my foot. Before I went to India, I went in, I was going to get my toes done all pretty, something girls like to do. And there was, there was an accident and they cut my foot from my pinky toe all the way back to my heel accidentally. And so now here I am in India and India is a very, they have very beautiful people in India but they have something there that I wish I could stop. And my prayer is that India would stop the caste system, stop it. Because God did not create a person that's worth nothing. Anyway, back on to the story. So in this testimony, um, I get to India where we're, we're gonna share at this one church and, and I'm dressed in Indian clothes. And these Indian clothes are very beautiful, but very difficult because um, I'm not used to them. Let me explain what they look like. So first I had on a pair of pants that are tied real tight at my ankles and they, all, they just tie around your waist. Then I have on this dress. The dress comes down and it has a slit that comes up the side. Very beautiful, very beautiful dress. I have on another piece of material that comes from this ankle, comes up, kind of wraps around my shoulders and down to the other ankle. And so this is the outfit that I'm in, a very lovely, beautiful outfit. And I'm sharing at the church. Then what happened was um, we're driving to go back to the hotel and the, the pastor says, you know what, we're closer to the leper colony today. So instead of going to the leper colony to tomorrow, let's go to the leper colony today. And you know what? I got to take a break. But when we come back, I'm going to tell you about what happened when I got to the leper colony. See you in a minute. Hey, welcome back. I'm just getting ready to tell you what it was like. So the pastor wants us to go today, a day early, to the leper colony. I don't want to go there today for several reasons. 
I have this cut on my foot. I'm wearing a fancy dress. And Mike says to the pastor, he's like, oh, that's okay. Yeah, let's stop there. I'm like, no. And my thought is when we come tomorrow, I'm going to have my foot wrapped up in a sock with some tennis shoes on instead of open toe sandals. I'm going to have on a pair of blue jeans. I'm going to have some gloves to come and hug the lepers. But Mike and the pastor figured out that I could go there today. So I get there and I am stressed already. We walk into the leper colony. Now, let me tell you how this leper colony is situated. It used to be that it was out um, away from the towns. But as the towns grew, the town got closer to the leper colony. So they p- placed a dump, a burning garbage heap, around the leper colony on three sides. And a, and a leper in a leper colony can never come out. Once they are in the leper colony, they're there for life. And so we're going to go and see them. And when I get there, I'm very stressed. We show up, the pastor comes and says hi to me. And then I see a woman dragging herself on on the ground because leprosy has eaten the joints in her hips. And I look at her face and her face on one side is missing. And her face kind of looks like It's just raw with owies and she has no fingers and you can see the leprosy is eating her. And I got so afraid. You know, it's one thing to see a disease in a book. It's a whole nother thing to see a disease on a person. And I got so panicked. I thought, you know what? I have to go to the bathroom. That's what I do when I get nervous. I I have to give myself a change of atmosphere. I have to go to the bathroom. I don't know why I thought the bathroom would look like my bathroom in the middle of a leper colony. But I get to the bathroom and what they had was there was a hole in the ground. Now I'm going to try and explain this with using as few words as possible, but you can follow. So I get in there, I start pacing. Now all of a sudden I have to go. So I'm there and I'm trying to hike up a dress kind of trying to hold down some pants and manipulate this piece of scarf that's everywhere. And everything got wet with what I'll call leprosy liquid. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And then it spilled up against my cut foot and I was sure I had leprosy. I mean, I was positive. I have formulated a plan. I'm going to get on a plane, travel 14 hours, make it to Chicago, and then I'm going to get a leprosy shot and I'm done with this. Oh, but the Lord, right? Oh, but the Lord. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going home. This is not the task for me. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to tell Mike, you have to take me home right now. I have leprosy. And as I'm walking out, the Lord dropped an office out of heaven just for me. Here's this office. I could I could make out the outline. It was white, but it was a perfect square. And he's standing in it and he's smiling. He's so happy to see me. And I know he's happy to see me that I am in India. He said, I sent you here for this. And I start telling him, no, no. He just keeps talking. He's a great coach. He just keeps talking. He says to me, he says, I desire for India to be a sign and a wonder in the world. I said, no. He's like, I desire for India to know my healing touch. No. And now he's starting to look at me like, is this woman getting what I'm telling her? Are you paying attention? And so then he looks at me, he goes, I sent you here to hug the lepers. And now I'm, I'm so agitated because I, he's not listening to me as if God should listen to us. That I said no. And as soon as I said no with such a bad attitude, he didn't use his words, but I heard him. I heard his head. I heard his heart. And this is what he said to me. You will not hear well done, good and faithful servant if you do not do this. Now I started saying no in a different way. No, 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 no. I thought if I can just get to him, 
He'll understand if I can just get to him. And as I tried to move to come to Jesus, he disappeared. The office disappeared. And I knew I have never been this close to being in trouble, except when I was in hell. And I never want to see that place again. I took off running to him. And then I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran over to where that woman was that I had seen dragging her body across the dirt. And I got down next to her and I shook. I was so afraid. Tears are running down my face. She's trying to tell me, no, 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 because she has active leprosy on her. I grabbed a hold of that woman and I just cried and cried. I held on to her. And then I got up and I went to the next person. Why was I crying? Because I was so afraid. But you know what? I was afraid more of what God said than any disease that woman had. And come to find out, this woman is the head Christian in her community. She loves Jesus. This is momentary light of fiction. You know what God told Mike? He said, Mike, I want, you, I want to introduce you to my royalty. Why did I give these people such a hard time? I hugged them all. I hugged all the lepers. In, in, in this place. And I, then I listened to what it was that they needed. And you know, they were so specific at what they asked for. There were about 60 of them there and they asked for four blankets, not 60 new blankets, but four blankets. They said they were hungry. They asked for some rice. They asked for some spice. They asked for one hairbrush because they all share there. It was very, very beautiful, very powerful to have been in this place with these people. Did you know there are babies born in the leper colony and they'll stay there their whole life. And you know what? These babies couldn't see what I saw. They didn't see someone with no fingers. They didn't see someone with a face that was being eaten off. All they saw was somebody who loved them. And that leper colony had such community. And the pastor who was the pastor of the leper colony volunteered to go knowing him and his family are never going to be able to come out. And when it's found that you have leprosy, they just put the whole family in there. And these people were so close to one another. And if you come in to the leper colony and you don't know Jesus, it won't take you long till you do. Because they encounter somebody right next to them who has the love of God shining through them. It's like, well, you still have leprosy. You know, we can endure all things if we have Jesus Christ. And the people there taught me so much. It was over the top intense for me. As we ministered to the people, they invited us into their homes. It's maybe a 10 by 10 room. And one person had a, um, had a boat cushion. And so wherever I was, they would bring the boat cushion there so that I had something to sit down on. You know, the Indian people are so beautiful. They're tiny in comparison to Americans, and I had dangle bracelets on. And so I started taking my bracelets off and placing them on the wrists of the people around me. And they were so grateful and so thankful. And the Lord started talking to my heart. And you're not going to believe what it was that he eventually said to my heart. And when we come back from this break and please come back because this story is not complete without the punchline. And I'm sure the punchline will catch you the same way it caught me. I'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. I was just getting ready to tell you 
about what it was like as I was leaving the leper colony. You know, I felt the fear of the Lord. So there's the fear of the Lord. Make sure you do the right thing. And then there's the fear of the Lord because you are walking on a very tight rope, getting ready to do the wrong thing. And I was so close to that wrong side. So when we got home, we landed. I thought, I'm going to go get that leprosy shot. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, Lord, if you go get the shot, you will have leprosy. I was like, oh, okay. I'm not going to get the shot. And I was, I was really kind of intimidated to talk to God because what's he going to say to me when I finally talk to him? And, and, and I'd shared with Mike, I'm afraid to talk to God, which in my life, I mean, I talk to him a lot. I talk to him all day. Mike's like, you haven't talked to God. I was like, no. I'm afraid to talk to God. I don't know what he's going to say. He's like, well, just get it over with. Just talk to God and get it over with. So I was like, okay, Father, can you help me? What did I do wrong? This is what he said. He said three things. First, Lord, you were filled with pride. You thought your life was more important than their lives but I've used you in spite of your pride. Second thing, you were filled with fear. And because of your fear, you panicked, started making a plan, but I've used you in spite of your fear. But this deadly combination, a cord of three is not easily broken, the Bible says. The third thing is you had an opinion. And I thought, yeah, I had an opinion, but I'm an American God. You know, we pride ourselves on our opinions. I have people come and ask me my opinion. There's certain people I go and ask them their opinion. But when God tells you to do something, your opinion does not matter. And that cord of three, Fear, pride, and opinion almost caused me that I would not hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I believe this with my, with my whole being. Now, I don't know how to get rid of fear all the time. I don't know how to get rid of that. And pride, even though I try to get rid of pride all the time and practice humility, it still creeps up. But you know what? I can kill my opinion. Because we need to take one of those three things out. And so it doesn't have to be my way. It gets to be his way. It doesn't have to be what I think I would like. What it must be is what God commanded us to do. Let's look at this. It says, as you go, make sure you're going. Preach the truth. Preach. That's what it says. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's what we need. We need the kingdom of heaven to be here now. You know why? Because we need to heal the sick. We need to cleanse the lepers. We need to raise the dead. We need to cast out the demons. Freely, Lori Ditto has received. And so freely, Lori Ditto has to give. I want you to think about your opinions. And what your opinions may be doing that's getting in the way. Because it's those kinds of things we need to stop. We need to be able to go. I want to pray right now in Jesus' name that you would have boldness to put yourself out there to say, this is my commandment. And that you're willing, you are very willing to go with God and then to preach. I want to talk to all of the introverts. You know that very special person you love sharing things with? Jesus. He's asking you Do it. Just do it. He'll help you. Heal the sick. Believe that he wants to do it. Cleanse the lepers. Try. Raise the dead. Try. Freely you've received. Now you need to freely give. Let's pray those things. Heavenly Father, you're so good to us. You love us so much. Jesus, we love you. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you. Cleanse us, God, 
of anything that would hinder us from our obedience to you. We want to be chosen by you, God. We want to be sent. We want to be anointed. We want to be appointed. And above all else, let us each hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Let us each hear that, God, on the day that matters the most, that when we hear it, we'll see it first on your face, that you're smiling. Your day counts today. In Jesus' name, amen.